What's up? <laughs> this is the bus. Check it out. My buddy Brad Bacon did the FBM logo on this thing a couple years ago. It's managed to survive thousands and thousands of miles around the United States as well as a couple seasons here in the yard. And um, this is it, baby. Don't drink and drive and don't catch the van on fire. And the next day they're like, they let me know that they like all the above. They drank and drove and caught the van on fire. So I was like, all right, cool, thanks guys. Like, Craigslist. It was it was gutted and it was already painted black. So we had a, we pretty much had a jump start on what it ended up looking like, what it's become now. Gilly came down and helped me out with it, and yeah, we outfitted it with bunks and put this wood floor down. No bullshit. Within like two weeks, we were test driving it to the first Texas toast and drove it all the way to Austin from the East Coast, and it was like learn the hard way, like what worked and what didn't work, and like little things like oh the gas gauge doesn't work and like etc etc oh and it only gets seven miles to the gallon and all right so like when we did get the texas toast like i'd gotten paid to be the announcer for that gig and all of my money went towards gas for getting there and back and it was like oh, all right i guess we're, we're flush on that one so. and then you know this is like the, the art studio art studio there's fucking art supplies of various sorts all over the place and Art of various sorts. You gotta have like a citronella plant because fucking mosquitoes are crazy. And then this cactus like went buck wild once springtime hit. I don't know if I've been watering it too much or what. This is the guest bedroom right here. Any number of BMX pros and personalities have slept in that thing. It's uh, one of the highest rated guest bedrooms on Airbnb and Hotel.com and also Bus.com. <laughs> I got like the, the master suite in the back, that's where, where I sleep. Pretty cool little zone back there. Magically, when I was moving out of the apartment and moving into the bus, I discovered that the back section of the bus was the exact same size as the double bed I had. So just built a platform and shimmied the mattress in here and I made it a bedroom. And uh, the bed fits exactly on it. Then underneath it, it's pretty much exactly the height of like the storage. And it's all just practical use of the space. Yeah, dude, plants, arts, photos, tall ceiling. What, what more could you want? Fucking, okay, you know, bookshelf. Was there some weird shit in there? Aspirin. <laughs> Normal grown man stuff, vitamins. I'm trying to stay healthier these days. Okay, and for all the years of uh, destroying myself through BMX and partying, it's like now I'm like, oh man, I'm still alive. I gotta like take better care of myself. <laughs> This is, this is the kitchen. That's the rocking chair. Ah. Woo! That's where I get to chill. Retirement home for aging BMXers. A rocking chair, drinking coffee instead of beer. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Wood stove has been one of the most crucial upgrades in the bus. Got it from a dude named Jan up in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, who donated it. Literally living like outdoors in the winter, you know, inside a bus, but outdoors, you know. Like it gets cold on the East Coast, so the wood stove is crucial. And it's like, it's a game changer for sure. But yeah, I'm fucking stoked on this thing. We'll like fire these things up, give you guys a little test run in a little bit if you want. This thing's not very sharp, but it's got some weight to it. Called out on some like 
live in fucking simple website for doing a shitty job of chopping this wood. Always with these fucking fingers, man, like fucking all jacked up. Hopefully this propane thing don't fucking blow up. That'd be an interesting piece for the YouTubes. Check out my finger. Cauterize that fucker. I've definitely smoked myself out before and been like not psyched. It's when my eyes start tearing if I'm in the bus and it's all smoky and I don't realize it. That's like my carbon monoxide detector. I don't think it's up to the code. <laughs> it's happened before where it like backdrafted and it got real smoky inside the bus. And it was like I woke up and I was just like, <sighs> only happened twice, but it was like, whew. everyone's like, dude, you gotta be careful with that wood stuff. And then I was like, yeah, dude, I am being careful, but like, anything goes. <laughs> kind of use what I need and not just have stuff and like accumulate debris in my life the same way as I used to. And I probably will again someday. I'll probably end up living in a shack. Yeah, fucking 12 lawnmowers and 35 bikes where I'm parked at. I can use the shed and have access to the house for like normal stuff. But if I had all my bikes and everything in here, it'd be like, oh fuck. <laughs> but everything we did in this bus was pretty much either used, free, or like repurposed and reclaimed materials. So like all this wood we, we either had laying around or came from pallets. Like, you know, this kind of stuff is just you know, pallets that were disassembled and cut to fit. You know, cutting up concrete footers that Crescent would get from his like job sites and basically just framing out this interior. This uh, this desk slash art studio right here, it's uh, an old door out of an old house with like a hinged three quarter inch piece of plywood. But um, I'd say the overall build budget for this thing was like less than a hundred dollars. You know, maybe minus screws and you know, stuff like that. Like the the contributions from the people that kick in are invaluable. So if you if you added all that stuff up, it's, it's this thing would be worth a bazillion dollars. Pretty cool, you know. All sweat equity put into this thing. It's actually awesome. Who am I, who am I kidding? This is badass. I've got an extension cord coming in from the shed outside by where we're parked, and you know run electricity in here off that. Yeah, that's next level for a 1993 International School Bus. Ain't a lot of school buses on the south side of the James River with Wi-Fi in them. <laughs> so this is like the, the screen door. We got like some mosquito netting up. And sometimes in the morning, if I leave it open, like a bird will come chill right here and be like, what's up? For transparency, full disclosure, not currently driving the bus on tour. That's why you don't see the bus on the road as much these days, because living out of it and traveling out of it are like two totally different beasts. Maybe not as cool as some people think, but I don't want to bullshit anybody either. You spend so much time traveling, you kind of just start feeling more at home on the road. Get the best of both worlds, you know? It's a road trip lifestyle, whether you're at home or traveling. And it's kind of fitting, you know, to end up living out of a school bus with this bicycle hobo cross sort of lifestyle, hanging out in Richmond, Virginia, on the south side of the James River. You know, it's unique, but I dig it. Thank you.